welcome. In this lecture, I'm just going to go through, we already went through kind of a blackboard sketch of how the argument goes. Um, but I think it's important, at least for the first few proofs that we do, to show you what it would look like in complete sentences. So let's do that. Um, so this is going to be my proof in complete sentences. So... Okay, um, so because this is like, these are these suppositions, but you're assuming the if part tells me I need to assume these. Okay, so suppose that A and B are um, contained in the integers are arbitrary subject to Uh, A divides B and B divides A. Okay, now what? Um, so the next thing that's nice to say, also to keep it in mind for yourself, is uh, we show that either, and I'm just kind of interpreting what this exactly this means, either A equals B or minus a equals b. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, so we first consider the circumstance where, so we first consider the circumstance where a equals zero, and this is where you can say the other one's gonna um, be the same by symmetry. Um, so the circumstance where B equals zero will then follow by symmetry. Okay, onward. Um, so I've told you what I'm going to do, right? This is always uh, good and important. Um, so since A, so I can just go through here, since A equals zero and A divides B, right? We have that um, we have... Zero divides B, and thus B, uh, sorry, and thus B equals zero. The fact that this is, we call this D3, this is our own private language, you don't put that in like an assignment or something, okay? Um, so now, since we assumed We assumed A equals zero, right? Um, that's going to tell us that A equals B. So this implies A equals B is desired. Okay. Um, now, right, and we don't go through the other one because it's a symmetric circumstance, so we just will um, kind of continue uh, uh, with the rest of the proof, but we can assume that A and B do not equal zero. Okay, so now suppose that A and B do not equal zero. So now suppose A does not equal zero and B does not equal zero. Okay, um, so since A divides B, right, um, we have, by the definition of divide, so we have uh, 
by the definition of divides that. Okay, um, there exists an integer m1, so there exists, right, I'm just kind of reading this out, an integer m1. So that, then I have b equals a times m1. Okay, um, and then I can just say similarly, because I'm using the same uh, uh, argument or justification here. So similarly, since b divides a, oops, similar, I have a lot of trouble remembering how to spell this. Similarly. Maybe that's correct. Maybe there's an I in there. So similarly, uh, since B divides A, right, um, we have an integer M2. Right. Um, so that B equals A M1. Oops. So that A equals B M2. Okay. Um, and then I can write thus. And then we're going to have like a, a big string, a big string here. So maybe we'll move it to the next one, which is that A equals B M2 equals AM1 times M2, which is uh, going to equal AM1 M2, i.e. A equals A times M1 M2. Okay. Now, this implies M1, M2 equals 1, okay? Um, so this implies M1, M2 equals 1. So we either have right, um, that they're both 1 or they're both minus 1. So we either have M1 equals 1 equals M2, or M1 equals minus 1 equals M2. Okay. Now, in the case where, so now we can do these one time. So in the case where, M1 equals 1 equals M2. Okay, um, so what's going to happen in this case? Then we're going to have that. Right, we have B equals M1A equals 1 times A equals A, i.e. B equals A as desired. Okay, um, and then we can do the other case. So in the case where um, M1 equals minus 1 equals M2. Oh, that definitely went off the, it was so close to not going off the end. Okay, um, so in the case where this equals M2, well, okay, so in the case where 
m1 equals minus 1 equals m2. There we go. Now we got it all in. Okay. Um, we're going to have, we have... that B is going to equal M1A equals minus 1 times A equals minus A, i.e. B equals minus A as desired. And then we can say hence in all cases A equals B or minus A equals B. Oh, <laughs> almost. Um, I can do this. A equals B or minus A equals B. Okay, there we go. So this is our final product proof. Um, there wasn't... Uh, it was hard to get this whole proof on the same board, so there were some kind of spacing things that I left out that I might otherwise do, such as actually list my cases. Um, but there's, a, you know, this this really has all the things that kind of this had. Um, but I start out with my suppositions. This is kind of typical language. They're arbitrary, subject to A divides B and B divides A. Um, it's nice to say what you're going to show. <laughs> it's nice to your reader. It also helps you to make sure that you showed what you meant to show. And then... We, you know, and you can first consider the circumstance where A equals Z, sorry, A equals zero. Um, and you can tell us at this point that the other one's going to follow by symmetry. So you're not going to actually need to cover that one. Uh, and so we can just kind of start out since A equals zero. And then you can kind of go from there, which is that, you know, um, well, we're just really following these logical things here. Um, notice that we have... Um, I guess it's in the next one. We actually tell, okay, I use the definition of divides. Um, and so in there, and then I'm using the definition, I'm writing it out that gives me something to work with as I did over here. Um, and uh, what else is there to notice in that is that, you know, I write this all on one line. I start with something I know, I keep on replacing through. Um, I don't start by saying that this is equal and then kind of put things back in. It doesn't work like that. Um, and so then we know that those has to equal one. We kind of write out, okay, so we either have, I listed what my two circumstances were. In the case where this equals this, we have this as being true, i.e. here is desired. This is a circumstance where I could have, I could have listed my two cases on a line and then said case one, blah, blah, blah. Right, you'll, you'll see me do that. Um, there just wasn't really room here. And then we have the same uh, kind of thing where I say now, in the case that this is happens, we have blah, blah, blah. And then in the end, hence, in all cases, right, I kind of point out that this is actually going to hold in all cases and so we're done. Okay, so there's going to be one more. We're going to talk a little bit about this proof. Um, and so I'll see you there in the next lecture. Sure.